Okay, uh, this is the first 10T uh, niobium tin superinducting tape coil. It was an evolution from the stranded cable. In this case, the conductor is a flexible ribbon that's laminated. It's made, this particular ribbon is green, that's insulation on the outside, and then uh, it's a laminate of three layers, copper on either side, and in the center, a foil of niobium alloy that has been converted uh, to NB3SN. So this is fully conduct superconductive at this state when you cool it, and it was wound into spools and the various spools soldered together here um, so that when energized it would produce high magnetic field in this one inch bore access magnet system. Uh, this became the first uh, commercial product of the General Electric superconductive products operation and that is the organization that was the predecessor to the uh, spin-off which became Intermagnetics General Corporation. The flexible niobium tin tape available uh, and with the technology of designing larger coils uh, that Carl was developing, uh, these efforts came together into General Electric's uh, first uh, commercial uh, offering. Uh, an operation was formed called Superconductive Products Operation. Uh, I believe this was in 1965-1966 uh, time frame and uh, Carl Rosner was the manager of this group. Uh, a small factory was set up in Building 28 to manufacture the conductor. It uh, uh, progressed to make a series of research magnets that were supplied to research centers around the world. An evolutionary form of this was to make the tape uh, narrower in width. Uh, this gave it uh, greater uh, magnetic stability uh, during its uh, operation. Mm -hmm.